is going to come. Change is going to come in all the areas in our lives that we're holding back. Let's give our burdens to God this morning. Amen? Amen. Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge all the sacred servers that spent their day yesterday here, beautifying Unity on the Bay. So today, go to 21st Street and take a look. There were people on the roof everywhere, priming and getting ready that wall to paint it. So who how many of you were here yesterday? Yay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a busy weekend. And Friday night, Juan Dolietro and I participated in an interfaith service for the celebration of Martin Luther King at the Temple of Israel. It was a beautiful service, reminding us that the dream is still alive. And the dream is still alive every time that we are willing to be a presence of peace. Every time that we are willing to be a presence of nonviolence. Every time that we're willing to come from love and not hate. Every time that we're willing to do what is right and doing what is right from a right consciousness. The dream is alive. So this morning, I want to talk to you about living the awakened life and living in mastery. But before I begin to share my message, I'd like for us to join together in this unified field because there's a huge power when two or more are gathered with an intention. So let us join with the intention of letting aside, releasing all our burdens to God this morning. Emptying ourselves over and over so that we can give our lives to God. So that we can realize the divinity of who we are. So that we can awaken to the power and the presence of God that is right here and right now calling you forth to be the living God. We see this for everyone here this morning. So if your heart is heavy this morning, give it to God. God knows what you need even before you ask. Give all your burdens to God and let us come from a place of openness, of love, of joy. God is asking you to lighten up, to open yourself to receive what is yours to receive. Thank you, God, for the miracles that are taking place in each and all our lives. Thank you, God, for the great awakening because we are here to live in mastery. And for this, we are grateful. And so it is. Thank you, God. <sighs> look around you. Just take a look around you. Look at the many manifestations of the one. One power, one presence, each a unique expression of this beauty, of this love. The theme for Unity on the Bay for 2011 is, you know what it is? You announced it last week. Does anybody know? Yes, awakening to oneness. What does that mean? What does that look like? What does that feel like? How is that going to show up in every area of our lives? That is what we're going to deepen and deepen and deepen through this year. But today I want to talk about how the five unity principles, when fully understood and embodied, can take you to enlightenment. Awakening to oneness through the unity principles. That is living mastery. Five simple unity principles that can totally transform your life. And living mastery is not about fixing yourself or acquiring something that someday you're going to be happy. It is the realization that everything that you think that you need, you already have. It is the realization that you are powerful, that you are beautiful, that you are God's child, that you are love itself, that all the wisdom in the universe is yours. 
and it is available right here and right now. Yes, we can end the struggle. You know how? By getting out of the way and letting God be God in our lives. Let God take the driver's seat. Ah, we can relax. We can relax. There is an intelligence that created the universe, that created the galaxies, that is in us. Did you know that our brain processes information at approximately 20 million billion calculations per second? Don't you think we can trust that intelligence to take care of our lives? <coughs> Opening our hearts and allowing that intelligence to guide us? And it is not that difficult when we learn a few skills and are willing to put them to practice. Then we can move from glory to greater glory. And every moment can be a celebration and delight. Every moment is the recognition that God is present, that God is alive, that God is closer than our very breath. You know, I really love the month of January because for me it's a, it's a month of hope, of new beginning. And we set our goals, and, and we determine to make some changes, and what we're going to realize in our lives. And that is all perfect, and that's all well, as long as it is done from the right consciousness, as long as we're willing to put God first. And the greatest realization, the greatest goal that we could ever, ever have is the realization of our divinity. So the invitation is for this year, if you have not written it down, put there the intention of 2011, the year of my awakening, the year of my awakening to oneness, the year when I am ready to have an experience of oneness, not only knowing it, but living it, breathing it, being it. We want to be the change we are the one that we've been waiting for. Recently I heard of this man that he was, he was all bent out of shape. He was feeling a bit shameful and guilty. So he had a lot of remorse in his heart. So he went to confession and he finds the priest and he says, Father, I have sinned. And the father says, well, tell me, son, what have you done? For the Lord will forgive you. And he says, you know, I have been on a steady relationship with my girl for, for over three years, and nothing has ever happened between us. But yesterday I went to visit her at her house, and no one was home. So I slept with her sister. And the priest says, well, that's bad, my boy, but you realized it, so God will forgive you. And the young man says, and last week I went to visit my girlfriend at her office, and no one was there except the co-worker, and I slept with her too. And the priest says, well, that's not very good, my son. And the boy looks at him and he says, well, last month I went to visit her at her uncle's house, and no one was home except her auntie, and I slept with her too. And there was silence. And the young man goes, father, silence. Father, father, and he looks everywhere for the priest. And he finally finds the priest hiding under the piano. And he says, Father, Father, why are you hiding? And the priest looks at him and he said, Well, I suddenly realized that there was no one around, that I was all alone. <laughs> it's all a matter of perception. <laughs> We're all living our lives in our own universe. So... <laughs> So let's talk about the unity principles. <laughs> and how they can change your life, because I will tell you something. I have been seeking for God. I have been seeking to end the suffering and the pain in my life for 20, 30 years until I came to know these principles and started putting these principles to work in my life. And I can tell you that they can change your life and you're willing to work them. What is the first unity principle? 
Only God, right? One power, one presence, only God. The second unity principle? I can't hear you. The divinity is within us. The third unity principle, we create a reality by the thoughts we hold in mind, right? The fourth unity principle? Prayer and meditation. And the fifth is action. I like to remember it this way. I'll give you a, a quick way to remember it. All God, all good, everything is God. Outer, inner, everything. This same presence is in me. We're not separate. I can come to realize that the God is in me. Third, we create a reality by the thoughts we hold in mind, or our experience of reality by the thoughts that we hold in mind. The fourth is prayer, meditation. And the fifth is action, it's working them. And it is an inner job. It is understanding them. It is meditating on them. It's contemplating on them. It is writing about them. Because whatever thoughts we have regarding God, that will have a picture in our lives. And then we can put them to practice in our daily life. How do we put them to practice in our daily life? I'll give you some examples. At work, in a relationship. If you are feeling stressed, if you are in shoulds or should nots, if you are totally caught up in thinking that something could be other than it is, then you're not coming from a unified consciousness, right or wrong. You're coming from a sense of separation. So that is a moment to stop and breathe and recognize that in this moment, I am truly not believing that it is all God and it is all good. And the moment we stop, then we have a better choice. We can come from a place of clarity. And in that moment, we can say, regardless of what I'm experiencing and feeling, I am willing to be open. I am willing to open my heart. I am willing to recognize that God is in this too. Because the clearer we get in our minds, the better our actions will be. It is this knowingness. This is putting God into practice in our daily lives, in our relationships. If I am having a conversation with Debbie and I'm in a place of stress or whatever, this is not going to add to the solution. I am not seeing the God in her. So it's time for me to stop and deal with my stuff, question my thinking, which is I'm going to talk about later on, about how to work principle three. Chris began last week about speaking about the first unity principle. Today I'm going to talk more about the second and the third unity principle. But I truly believe that the first unity principle, it's all God and it is all good. That principle, if we really sit with it and are willing to embody it, can change our lives. Because the rest of the principles are just supporting this principle. That it is all God. All good. And we are manifestations of this Godness. It is all happening in the mind of God. We are individual expressions of this presence, of this God. It's like we are living in an ocean of bliss. Like the fish, we can never be separate from this water. There's God essence everywhere, presence, God intelligence that we're breathing, that we're being. It is the intelligence that is moving through us, around us, everywhere present. It is the notion of love, because God is love, and this love is awakening to itself. See, God does not make mistakes. God loves you. God does not make junk. God loves you. We're a child of God, made in the image and likeness of our Creator, and God loves you. And it does not matter to God if you are skinny, fat, young, old, woman, man, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, straight. It does not matter to God if you are black, brown, yellow, red. God loves you. God loves you. You are God's creation. God loves you. Turn to the person next to you, to your right and left, and say, God loves you. God loves you. God loves his creation. 